So, I was talking to Michael Neiman, and Michael said, you know, Tony, not everybody knows your story. And uh, maybe it's time that a lot of folks really know how I got started. So this little seminar of mine, this little 30 minutes we're going to have together, is to allow you to understand how I came from where I was to where I am. So, how did I get here? Well, I came down the elevator, then I went on that fountain thing, and I walked to the casino, and it's just smoky in there, it's a bear. And then, oh, not, I'm sorry, not that, how did I get here? Actually, I got it because I was born in a van down by the river, and all that. <laughs> That's not true either. God, look at you guys, look at this, look what Carl Dykeman has done! I was an army brat, so my dad and my mom and uh, myself, we moved, we, moved, we moved seven times before fifth grade. And I set up in a place called Trumbull, Connecticut. And there, there I managed to uphold the C-minus average. <laughs> Very impressive student. And when I was a little kid, my middle name was Sawyer. But I thought the S stood for scared, because that's how I spent most of my time. I had a bit of a speech impediment as a kid. I used to stutter and stammer. So uh, I was pretty insecure. I was not a great athlete. My father was a great athlete. He was the captain of his football, baseball, and basketball team. And he drove me and he pushed me, and I was pretty bad. I had two left feet, and I was just not a great athlete. So uh, in those early days, it was a struggle. But the one thing I did have was a sense of humor. <laughs> Some of the time. Oh, you know, it's kind of fun. <laughs> So early on, it was a struggle for me. I barely got through school. I was always picked last for every single team, except for dodgeball. What's up with that? <laughs> uh, there's Horty. Horty! Got him! <laughs> you know, so then I went off to college, and uh, I struggled there as well. But um, I really got good at drinking beer. <laughs> awesome beer drinking was so much fun. And um, a couple other things that I cannot mention here. Are there children? It is a GP show, so. Uh, but the really neat thing, the real, one of the major transformations for me was not the fact that I was moving physically or eating well, because it was all hot dogs and hamburgers and pizza and beer. I mean, honestly, like a lot of young guys back in the <coughs> 70s, um, at least when I grew up. Uh, but one semester, my sophomore year, I took a weightlifting class. Now, I played football in high school. Actually, I was more of a tackling dummy during practice and it was an actual player. The score is 104 to 5? I can go in now. <laughs> Mom and Dad, take a picture. <laughs> During warm-ups, I would roll around the grass just so I looked like I played, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. But, uh, but in the 60s and 70s, and still to this day, what ends up happening is a lot of, a lot of coaches have this, you know, kick your butt mentality. They don't have any sympathy for the fact that you're not good enough yet. And so either you're a winner or you're a loser. They put you in two categories and it's no great, right? But I took this weightlifting class in college and the instructor was this really cool, funny guy. I looked forward to going and lifting weights. I looked forward to doing aerobics. I looked forward to having my butt kicked. And I learned, I vowed from that day forward that if I'm ever involved with anything that comes to health and fitness, I'm not gonna be like those coaches from the 50s and 60s that you know, either put us in categories of winners and losers, but with this guy, I wish I could remember his name, but it was a very, very powerful semester. I just liked him, so I always looked forward to the class, and I would always go, and of course, in the semester, I went from sort of a, ch not chubby, but I had kind of a belly and skinny arms, and all of a sudden, the dirty. <laughs> I went and loved the shirt, but I don't want to scare me. Woo! Um, <laughs> Do it! Do it! Do it! So um, then I moved to California in 1980, and I had $400 in my pocket. Can you imagine going from Rhode Island to the University of Rhode Island, and with $400, two suitcases in my stereo, couldn't bring my speakers because they were this big back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to have those shit, Mom, thanks. So, you know, I moved into this friend of mine's uh, sister's place. We slept on the floor for the entire summer. I had no money, but I was a trained mom, which really impresses the parents. My dad did a cocktail party. What's your son doing? Well, he just cured cancer. And 
My little son is a CEO of four companies. What's your son doing? Oh, he's doing mine at the pier. It's very <laughs> I was a carpenter, I was a handyman, I was a dishwasher, I was a waiter, um, I was a go-go dancer at Chippendales. Yeah, the line of feet. Yeah, great. Yeah, I went out between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. so you could tell like, five people in the club. Yeah, we got a couple of stragglers and homeless guys. Get in there and dance. Kid was a living. So, you know, the interesting thing was, when I first got out to California, it wasn't about, it wasn't about exercise or fitness, it was about surviving. And so, um, I had to do all these different kinds of jobs, and uh, it wasn't easy, you know. But the cool thing was, uh, about California, which didn't exist when I grew up, is there were, there were public gyms on every corner. Now, in Rhode Island, Connecticut, the only place you find them would be at a university or at a college. But the cool thing about California was, they were everywhere. In, that, in those days, they were doing $99 for a year's worth of membership. And I walked in, and I saw my first aerobics class, and I went, oh, this is good. <laughs> it's all women. Why would I, why would I not want to do this? <laughs> How you doing? Yeah? Great. I'm an instructor. What's your name? The <laughs> son Oh, huh? What's your name? <laughs> what are you two doing later? <laughs> So I was also an actor, you know, I wanted to be Brad Pitt and Jim Carrey at the same time. So I went to acting classes and I was in a couple of small movies and I was in a couple of commercials. But it really wasn't very, you know, it wasn't really happening for me. And then um, I was training my boss one day and my boss introduced me to Tom Petty. And Tom Petty called me up and I swear to God, Oh, it's Tony, it's Tom. <laughs> no, really, bro, who's, who's this? It's Tom Petty, yeah, yeah, hung up on a guy. <laughs> Ring. Dude, and like my buddy picked up my roommate. Dude, I really think it's Tom Petty. Oh, I was talking to Harlan and my wife and I are going to go on tour. I'm not in great shape. I've got to get off the drugs. And, uh, can you help me? So before you know it, my average state was getting up and training Tom Petty and Billy Idol and Annie Lennox and Stephen Stills and Sean Connery and Annie Lennox and Usher and Hugh McGregor and this kept growing and growing and growing. And I didn't have to wait tables anymore. I didn't have to be a go-go dancer anymore. I didn't have to be a waiter anymore. I didn't have to do all those other things. I had my own business, just like you do now. <laughs> you know, and the really, really cool thing is, maybe you've heard the story or not, but along the way, you know, it was one of those jobs where I had my own apartment, rent control, awesome view of the convalescent home across the hour. <laughs> If you got on the roof of the building and on your tiptoes, you could see palm trees at the beach. I mean, how much better is it than that, you know? So, um, and I had a couple clients that I would train at my house, in my little apartment, you know, right downstairs from my two broken down cars that got broken in about every three and a half minutes. Which was here. <laughs> and then one day, a mutual friend of mine says, you know, there's this guy who's coming into town and he might start working for us and you guys have the same sense of humor and um, maybe you should meet him. And his name is Carl. <laughs> so my friend Ben, our mutual friend Ben, brought Carl, Carl over, and within the first half an hour, we were both like this. <laughs> Bro, you're so funny, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I know exactly. That's so great. Let's go up. So we went clubbing and we went skiing and we did all kinds of things together. Along the way, he said, "You know what? I've been working for this company long enough, and they're not really." Um, focusing on the things that I want to focus on. I, I'm a fitness guy, you know. I, I did eight minute abs, hello. You know, I know how to go to the next level. Carl, is it eight or seven? You can't do abs in six minutes, I'll tell you that. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still a thing, you know. It's a quiz later. Um, what's my time? I got 19 minutes. It's not a problem. I've got it. So, um, you know, Carl and I made something early on with Debbie Sievers. Who loves Debbie Sievers? <laughs> Yet, go out and get it because it works. 
butts like Lang, I love. <laughs> so Debbie and I we did a uh, great body guarantee with Carl. We ran a little low on cash, so at 7 o'clock in the morning, we run to the beach in the fog and shoot some stuff, you know. Let's do it now, because we can't go inside because we're out of money. And we made it, and, and they made money. And it actually uh, gave us some credibility. Before you know it, Carl said, you know, what's that program that you've been doing? It sticks like 90 days, and, and I want to base it on this thing on, on crew called, you know, um, Power 10. And we kind of sat down, and we figured out what it was, and we developed something called Power 90. <laughs> now, when we developed Power 90, we were a team. I mean, we were a couple of guys in the closet. You know, there was no team beach body, there was nothing, you know? <laughs> John, John was in the broom closet. You know, Carl was where the uh, cleaning supplies were, that's where his, his office was. And we made this Power 90, and everybody in the industry said, What? And they did it with a really high tone. What? <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Dog, there's dogs like three miles away. <laughs> and um, we proved everyone wrong. We realized, we knew that there were people in this country who were not afraid of getting off their butt, working out six days a week, and figuring out how to eat healthy food. Hello. <laughs> so, of course, Power 90, P90X, P90X Plus, one on one, 10 minute trainer. That's just me. Then we started bringing in other trainers, Shaleen, Sean, and all the new trainers that are part of Beachbody. Hello. You have more options to exercise. You have no more excuses. None. Zero. Zilch. Because Carl and Sean and all the top VPs and presidents in our company understand that it's all about authenticity and it's about integrity and giving you guys things that work as opposed to that little chair that you do like this way. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. It's like three minutes a day, three times a week. I'm, I'm killing it. <laughs> I, saw, I saw a sweat beat last week, I swear. <laughs> I put it in a little tin, I still am saving it. I'm waiting for the next one, you know. And I'm on those pills, those pills are great. I only throw up like three times a day, but what about that? Let those pumps make that, we're gonna make the real deal, so. basically, in my hand, the things that I did, the things that I continue to do so that I can go from the kid who is washing dishes, wearing uh, dolphin shorts and tiger socks on a, on a box at 2 in the morning for homeless guys, to where I am right now. So this is my story. That was my story. There are other people. You have to figure out what your story is as well. Mark Briggs has a story. Tracy Morrow has a story. My sister Kit has a story. I wonder if Richard Neal, with 242 pounds lost, has a story. How about Lindsay Oliver Farewell with 154 pounds? I wonder if she's got a story. Each and every one of you have one, and that is your success, your story, your reality, your life, your experiences along the way, falling, getting up, falling, getting up again. That's what makes you better. That's what makes you stronger. That's what gives you success. How's that sound? story for you, which is kind of fun, you know, if you're involved with Team Beach Party. So I'm in D.C. and I'm working with the troops, I'm working with Congress, trying to get up those points. And uh, I get Congress to agree on anything, you know what I mean? So I, they, they agree on jumping each other, so I'll tell you that one. Alright, so I'm coming well out of the gym, and I'm, you know, and there's one guy comes up and says, Mr. Horton, thank you so much, I lost 45 pounds from having a conversation with him. And then this black limousine pulls up, and I'm thinking, oh, what the heck is that? And the window goes down, there's this kid in a tux, and a woman in a gown, and I said, yo, dude, you going to your wedding? He says, no, man, I'm going to the prom! My girlfriend and I just lost 50 pounds a piece, and we're going to be the best of the ones there. What? I got the guy, I got the kid in the car, and then I see a girl, and her name is Hope. And she's coming at me with a white box, like this. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Tony Martin, I can't believe it, I'm going to leave it, I can't believe it. So she's talking, she's excited, and I've lost all this weight with P90X, and it's all been amazing, and we're hugging, and we're taking pictures in there. It's a whole big gathering in the corner, and people are looking, and I said, hey, what's in the box? She said, it's my birthday cake. I said, oh, so she opens it up, and on it is a picture of me. <laughs> oh, 
Because her birthday was not only a celebration of her birth, but a celebration of her success. And she's a coach, and she's here. Hope you in the room. Give it to me. years to find it. You want to hear it in the next five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. If you want to be successful, you have to have a purpose. You have to have a reason why. It has to be so powerful it knocks you over. This is huge. This is important. Your purpose, your why. What are your goals? Write them down. I don't care how crazy they are. If you put them on paper and you post them where you can see them, chances are that's your start and that's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. I had them everywhere. I said, what am I going to do? Do I want to live in a van down by the river? That wasn't on the list. All right? What was on the list is kind of where I am now. Because I broke them down. Number two, a plan. You've got to have a plan. You've got to figure out what you're going to do in advance. It doesn't have to go perfectly. Sometimes you're going to have left turns and right turns. But if you plan it, just like your workouts, chances are you'll do it. All right? Your plan is your who and your when. All right? Who are you going to talk to? And when are you going to do what you need to do to make sure that you get what you want? This is huge. A purpose and a plan, just like with the workouts. Another thing, consistency. You now officially work for yourselves. You can't go back to the man, take the card, click, click. All right, nice. This job sucks, this job sucks. Can't wait to get out of here, I don't care. All right, look. and click. Oh, hey, traffic, this is... Get out of my way! <laughs> You now work for yourselves. Now you're at home. You don't get up at noon. I have to go down to the internet and see what's going on there. Yeah, maybe I'll do some net coaching stuff. Oh, crap. I'll do it tomorrow. Your job is to turn this job into a real job. You know, if you want what you want, if you want the success that I know that you can have, then you've got to be consistent. Figure out what time you're going to get up just like you're going to go to work. All right? Figure out who you're going to talk to, what you're going to do, what webinar you're going you're to participate in, what event you're going to go to. This is huge. Purpose, a plan, and consistency. Number four, variety. So you're working, you're working, got your plan, boom, didn't work. If you do it again, what does Einstein call insanity? Doing the same things over and over again, expecting a new result. I don't know why. I'm not getting the results I was hoping for. I've been on the elliptical now three days a week for the last ten years. <laughs> and still have that same look in the mirror. Get off the elliptical! Do something crazy. Be unique. Be unusual. Live outside of your comfort zone. This is important. And number five, and I talked about this to a lot of the team events. How's my time? Ten minutes. I think I'll go into Shavasana. <laughs> oh. This is the core of who I am as an adult man who wants to be successful, and that is integrity. You can cut corners. You know, it could all be about, you know, being a Shakeology salesman, all right? Or it could be a lot more than that. Shakeology, hey, come on, hello. Greatest product since the beginning of man. <laughs> Not just coaches are using it, professional athletes are using it, actors are using it, people in Congress are using it. I'm at, I'm at the congressional gym. Hey, man, I'm into that Shakeology right now. So you should be a coach. Well, it can't be because, you know, Congress would want to be, but they can't. They're still drinking their psychology. All right? But it's not everything. Your job is to understand your major, your first, the number one goal is to help solve the obesity crisis. That's what it's all about. Start with health and fitness first, and then build your pyramid from there. Does that make sense? Yes. Last but not least, intention. Intention. You're going to do it with ego, grandstanding, look at me, hop, hop, fancy cars, whatever. That boat will crash. Kaboom. You can either do it with your ego, or you can do it with, with integrity. You decide. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone. The fact that you came here and did all those workouts, some of you did three yesterday, whoa, hello, I'm saying you're out of your, your comfort zone. All right? That's the only reason why I'm as far as I am, because I was the scared little kid with a speech impediment who had two left feet, who was picked last for everything except for dodgeball, like I said, and I kept doing things 
it took me out of my comfort zone, all right? Do scary things that don't kill you, all right? Just go like this. Another door. <laughs> open, walk through. Open, walk through. You're not going to die. You're just going to get better. You're going to become more successful. And you're going to be happier. And so you're going to be happier. Enjoy the struggle. Enjoy the struggle. Enjoy the struggle. It's key. Don't be attached to the outcome. Trust me. Oh, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get insanity. I weigh 420. God, I hope I weigh 115 in uh, United. <laughs> Crap, that didn't happen. Well, I guess I'm supposed to be big. You keep coming. Jeremy Oast, one round, two round, three rounds. 180 pounds, right? All right, get out of that comfort zone. Who are your mentors, teachers, and coaches? This is huge, this is huge. You're here this weekend, and you're gonna sit in these seminars, you're gonna to listen to me, you're gonna participate in different events, and what's gonna happen inside your brain. You're gonna know stuff that you didn't know before you got here. So it's all about seeking knowledge and information. What's one phenomenal way to be a better coach so that you have more information not only to help yourself, but the people in your life and everyone else so you can help solve the obesity crisis? I don't know, P90X certification maybe? Folks, we're doing a special trip to the moon. I think, I think uh, Justin Bieber and the Who are playing. I don't know. We're working on it. We're working on the pods now to go to the moon. So get certified and come and join us. All right. <laughs> so for me, when I first started out, I would pick up every book. If you look at my library, it's self-help book after self-help book. Now we go to seminar after seminar. It was everything in those books. It was every seminar perfect. Did everything resonate with me? No. Some of it was <coughs> crap. <laughs> But I kept going, and I kept filtering the things that worked and the things that didn't work, and that was important. So, the key here is go to the fit clubs, find gurus, see a film, go to webinars, whatever it takes. Run from the naysayers. Who here has had some conflict in the process of this change? Raise your hand. The punks, those people are punks, they don't know, they don't know better, it's not their time. So ignore them and find the doers. You're here right now. Be with them, hang with them. Talk to them, listen to them. Grow with them, learn from them. All right. I got 40 seconds. I can do it. I got it. All right, this is really important. Raise your hand if you've been in a situation where it's a big group and there's things going on, you think, you know, there's information coming at you, but still you have questions that haven't been answered and you were afraid to raise your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with me. And I did that from first grade all the way through senior year of college. Oh my God, that's a really important question. There's people in the room, they all look like they're nodding, like they know what's going on. I'm freaking clueless, so I'm just going to sit on my hands and go back to my dorm and go, holy crap, I'm not going to pass this test. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then I stopped caring. And what I ended up doing was, I don't care. I don't care. I got a question, I got a question, I got a question. There is no such thing as a dumb question. There is no such thing as a bad question. Just keep asking them over and over again. Don't ask the same ones over and over again. <laughs> All right? And here's, here's the thing. When you go to your teachers and your mentors and your coaches, chances are you're going to get different answers. Different answers right? Yeah, but this coach who's making 600K a year said this, and this coach who's doing really well who's a 45 diamond coach says that, and they're not the same thing. Crap! <laughs> you know who you are, you know where you've been, you know what your story is. Take a little here, take a little here, take what works for you. Don't do it because 10 people who are doing it, it works for them. Pick your reasons. Pick your, uh, you know, pick your techniques that help you grow and learn to be a better coach. Make sense? Yes. 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 Here's another thing. This is what success does to people. They stop asking questions. Hey man, I'm doing good. I'm like 
eight star. I don't have to work for the man anymore. Boom. And then people begin to think they know it. We just developed a brand new MMX. You know, Carl said, look, tempo was good, it was a little mellow, can we turn up the volume? And I went, Carl, I suck at martial arts. So, I went, wait, I know somebody who's pretty good. Hey, Briggs, it, that dude, uh, I need help. So Mark and I worked together, and we made the coolest MMX work workout. You can't imagine it. I hope you become certified and you get to enjoy it, because it is awesome. So, I don't care how successful you are, how big you are, how big your house is, Stay humble. Keep asking questions, and it'll get better and better and better. And you will continue to grow, and you will continue to change, and change is good. Here we go. So, you've asked your questions, you got your answers. Now, you have to apply them. You have to do them. You have to take action. Action is everything, all right? There's two kinds of action. There's personal action. The things that you need to do for yourself to get your house in order. You've got to get your ducks in order. It's got to start with food and fitness first. Say it with me. Food and fitness first. Food and fitness first. Again. Food and fitness first. Because when you exercise and eat right, you change the way your brain functions. You have more energy and enthusiasm to go out in the world and make change and figure things out. You sleep better, your cognition is better, your memory is better, you're more enthusiastic, your glass is half full. And when you're overweight, you're overwhelmed, period. Can anybody relate to that? Raise your hand. Yeah. So you can't be a coach three years in and, and, and still have that same 50 pounds. It's, you're, you're not going to be a successful coach because when you walk into the room, people look at you and you, you know, you're trying to show them what, what coaching is all about, and you look the same as you did three years ago, are they going to believe it works? No. It's hard. I just cut out sugar three months ago. <laughs> I see a brownie go, look at you. <laughs> oh, what is that, key lime pie? Whatever. <laughs> the guy brings in the buns. Take the buns out! Out of the room. I want the salmon. I want to read something to you that I think is really important. And I'm going to read it because I'll screw it up if I try to remember. All right. Action is behavior. Integral behavior breeds success. Success happens only with action. Boom. All right? Next. Okay. So who here thinks they're funny? Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks they're kind of on the shy side a little bit? A little hard talking to people. So, if you really want success, here's a couple of basic things. This is kind of, you know, this is nothing strategic, but you've got to find the fundamental process. Uh, if coaching is this really hard thing that you want to figure out, and it's just a pain in your butt, then it's just, there's no way. There's no way you're going to have the success. Uh, that I know that you want to have. So I got to tell you one thing. You know, I mean, I was a stutterer and, a, and, a, and a, I had speech impediments and I was a horrible athlete, but I found a way to make people laugh. Now, I'm not asking you to be comedians, but I am asking you to lighten up! Lighten up! All right? Don't be so attached to the outcome. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfectionists fail. Me? I'm cool this half the time, but it turns out pretty good because I keep doing this. <laughs> That's all you gotta do, man. All you gotta do is your best, then. Forget your best. Forget your best, then. Forget your best. He's fighting. All right. That's all I want you to do.